Thank you. Okay, Sunday afternoon, four o'clock. After this one, still one lightning talk to go. And I never expected so many people to show up, so uh, I'm glad you're all here. I hope we can uh, show you something interesting. We're going to talk about UML Canvas. UML Canvas is a little open source project. Kuhn, myself, and some other people in the audience here started uh, some time ago. Um, and uh, we're going to introduce you to it. Let's go up. Next. There you go. The big question in introducing a project, of course, is showing you what it is. Behold, UML Canvas. OK. There's a title up there, and it has a reason. There is the same UML Canvas on a little blog I'm writing about a little project about autonomous robots. This is the main reason why I started, or we started, UML Canvas. OK. We can also use UML Canvas in something fancy like Google Wave. Yeah, sure, right. Uh, or on a website of its own. Right. This is starting to look like a marketing screenshot-like uh, presentation, so I'm going to cut the crap. We're in a developer conference here, so we're going to switch to the real thing. A real browser and the same UML Canvas. OK. so. What's so special about this? This is, a, this is an image, right? An image taken from a case tool where I, did, did, I draw up a little, uh, a little UML diagram. I copied it and pasted it, and then just in the source, we're going to see that there is an image, image tag, right? Oh. <laughs> um, where is the image tag? There are some interesting things there. JavaScript. The canvas tag, HTML5, and text. There is no image there. We have created, step one, uh, JavaScript that looks into your code in your HTML for some textual representation of a UML diagram. It looks for the canvas tag, and it will render this textual U, uh, UML representation into what we just saw on the page, which is pretty nice because it eliminates the need to update the diagram in my case tool and copy, paste, upload it to the server. It's all gone. We just have one HTML file containing the textual representation of the UML diagram, and it will render it visually, what, in fact, is, of course, what you want with UML. OK. Um, can we go back for a second to the source again? Um, how do we, where is the little magic? Well, we use the ID of the canvas, which is what uh, UML Canvas is looking for. And then uh, if you add a text area or a predefined, uh, preformatted text uh, element, if you reuse that same ID and you add a suffix source, it will match the two. And we, that is, in fact, a way that we, um, actually try to do a lot of things. So if we go back to the, to the diagram itself, um, and we go to the next, uh, next slide. OK, so there is the same thing. That's the same text area, which now isn't disabled visually uh, from the, uh, that's pretty nice. And OK, another advantage over static images, a canvas element, a nice, element uh, which allows us to draw not one image but continuously updating it so we can interact with the UML diagram that's in there. That's pretty neat because UML has a little uh, annoying uh, aspect that the positioning of your classes, etc., is pretty meaningful if you want to uh, be able to uh, uh, transfer the, the, the idea of the class diagram you're looking at. So. If we want to create this source, it's hard if you, don't, if you can't interact with it like we just did. Now, we want to update the source because now we have uh, edited our UML diagram. Um, how do we get it? Well, I said this was a source. We already had one. We have also created, on the next slide, well, there's no difference there. It's still the same source or 
maybe if you start moving things around. Cool, UML Canvas will also re-export any change we visually make to the UML Canvas diagram, which is, if we look quickly at the source, now done using, where is it? Another text area, which is by default empty, with the suffix generated. Great, we can copy from there uh, the new source and then imp uh, paste it into our HTML diagram. Um, yeah, let's go next. So here we are, pretty nice. So we're back where we started. We now know we have a source, we have a generated uh, element we can use. We have added a few more others, and we're not going to introduce them all uh, one by one. We're going to introduce them to you in one big go. Okay, what just happened? When Kuhn was moving over the diagram with his mouse, he pressed I, the I of our inspector. An inspector combines everything we had before. We had a source, we had a generated uh, source element. Now we combine those two in what you see here, our editor. Editor is in fact source and generated uh, element at the same time. So if Kuhn starts dragging around classes, he can uh, see the changes. So that was the idea of the generated part. But he can also start editing the text area to change the diagram. And as you can see, the editor, if you're making mistakes, will give you preliminary, some uh, basic feedback on uh, what you have uh, done wrong. And there you go, you're textually editing the uh, UML diagram and it's visually updated uh, in a to a synchronization. There are some other tabs out there. Uh, we also have some properties. So this one was actually the diagram that was on my blog about uh, the, the little autonomous robot. Um, we also added a console. Console is just giving you feedback on what it is doing. It's pretty uh, verbose right now, but if you look uh, at the top, completely at the top of it, you will see that we also output some information. Rendering this diagram currently takes about 68 milliseconds. Uh, that's pretty nice. It's Firefox, of course. There are other browsers out there that perform very, very badly mostly because they don't even have the HTML5 element and we need, uh, or we can thank Google for uh, providing some uh, em emulation. Okay, uh, moving on to the last tab of the inspector, the About tab. And here's some information more about how we deal with things. Uh, UML Canvas itself is not the entire project itself. Um, we are also dealing here uh, with an implementation on top of a layer we created before. It was a Canvas 2D. Uh, implementation, which is a wrapper of the canvas element providing us a sort of a shape-oriented way and adds uh, event-drivenness uh, to the basic bitmap uh, drawing device we have. As you can see, it's uh, licensed uh, under a BSD license, um, and UML Canvas then is in fact a library on top of the Canvas 2D uh, implementation, just describing all the elements, all the, the graphical shapes that we need to uh, display the UML um, diagrams. Um, there's one more aspect that's of importance. We're our, our version numbering. So Canvas 2D is at 0.3-31 currently. UML Canvas 0.3-1, we released the 0.3 released last week. Um, as long as we haven't reached 1.0, we're not committing ourselves to any stability. Um, but with, at the current pace we're moving, we think we can uh, reach this pretty much by, uh, by summer. And from then on, the most APIs will be, uh, will be very solid. Um, okay. Let's see. What else? Let's go to the source. Ooh, wait a minute. There was a lot less than we had before. Now there's only a canvas element. Where's my source? Where's my generated? Where's my inspector? Where's everything? Well, we started off with a, 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 a JavaScript library that allows you to render UML diagrams. We extended it with a server component because at a certain point, 
we were interested in being able to share UML diagrams also. So what did we do? Or what does a UML canvas do? If it doesn't find the source element, it will take the idea you give to the, um, to the canvas element and go request information at our server site. So with this idea, it went to our um, hosted UML canvas service and fetched the information. That's pretty neat. And it even gets better, because if you look at it, we also have now the opportunity to save. We can save the changes Kuhn just made on our hosted UML Canvas site. So there we go. You can log in. I'm going to go into that in a second. Uh, it says it's you, that you're not logged in, and we will generate uh, a random URL for you. Um, that means that because it's loaded already from the host UML Canvas site, we, um, we can't reuse the same. So here's a diagram. Below we saw that there was the original, so there are some changes. And if we now commit as an anonymous user, and then you fail miserably live demoing, <laughs> we would have, it would have saved us and given us the new URL um, containing There you go, with a little help from a co-presenter. You now have a public URL with the newly uh, just created UML diagram, which offers you information about, you can embed it in any HTML, you can uh, even use it in the wave uh, gadget, as a wave gadget, you can request it just as a JSON information, which is what we do normally uh, ourselves. And ADL is our uh, abstract uh, domain language, our little language that we use to describe uh, UML diagrams. Okay, so that was a quick rundown of uh, all features. So if you have an account, just to finalize that one, if you have an account, you can, you can define your own ideas uh, for the URL. Uh, the diagrams will remain longer uh, on the site because anonymous uh, diagrams are, are short-lived. Oh, we have three minutes to go. Okay, let's quickly try to add some more things uh, to it. This is what it all started for, uh, with. Uh, we are software architects uh, helping Belgian companies create uh, in-house software, and we are faced a lot with UML and uh, the difficulties to uh, collaborate on UML. And we wanted to start the model factory, which uh, we hope will become, over time, uh, a reference uh, site for uh, UML diagrams, uh, models, etc. And therefore, we needed a way to uh, enable the rendering of UML diagrams without the need to constantly uh, upload uh, images and have different styles, etc. So this is where it started. Uh, today, the model factory, all diagrams on, uh, out there are all hosted on UML, hosted UML canvas, which means you can reuse them uh, in any way, just like we did uh, a few seconds ago. Um, we know that 99.99% of current UML diagrams are not UML canvas diagrams. They are living in, for example, Enterprise Architect or uh, any other UML case tool. Um, we can't expect people to jump over uh, to our site and say, okay, we're going to abandon these tools. So what we're also providing, and which we'll be releasing for Enterprise Architect in the next uh, two weeks, is a plugin that allows synchronization of diagrams with the hosted UML Canvas uh, implementation. So it allows you to not only you, uh, create and uh, use UML diagrams from uh, the web-based solutions, but also to uh, use them in their day-to-day -day case tools. Um, UML Canvas is a JavaScript implementation on top of a still not finalized HTML5 uh, specification, and it's running in all kinds of browsers. We know this is the, the web development hell, and we've had a rough year also uh, in uh, bringing it uh, to the web. We currently can use your help. Uh, if you have some time to spare, visit uh, testumlcanvas.org. Um, it takes about uh, 30 seconds to help us out so we can improve uh, UML Canvas on all platforms and all browsers. 
Finally, UML Canvas is a technical implementation, but it's a reference implementation of an initiative we started to, uh, which uh, tries to uh, set UML free. UML currently is locked into the desktop case tools. We want to bring it uh, to the web, uh, and we want to we want to do that. Thank you very much. Uh, three URLs bring you to the things we have discussed, and uh, if you have any questions, we can see you after the talk. Thank you.